on the latest Global Force Wrestling Spotlight, we are talking Moose. This is BQ when I do this for the Global Force Wrestling fans. Are you watching one of Braxton's matches? So it's been a little over a year now that Moose has been a part of Global Force Wrestling. He debuted at Destination X last year. Destination X last year was nowhere near the show that this year's was. But it had people talking because Moose debuted at the end. And there had been some rumblings that it was very possible he was going to show up. So I don't remember the details. I do know that he was with Ring of Honor. And at the time, I, I watched uh, Ring of Honor pretty regularly. And uh, as I've said hundreds of times, I, I don't like it as much now. But I watched it pretty regularly last uh, last year around this time. And uh, Moose was one of the people who really stood out to me. And I kind of got in the game late with Ring of Honor. And uh, I remember the first time I was watching Moose, he was... He was on the tail end of his undefeated streak. I think Cedric Alexander may have ended up beating him. But he was on an uh, undefeated streak. He was a heel. He had Veda Scott, uh, Stokey Hathaway. And, uh, I, man, I, w I just looked at this guy. I was like, man, this, this, what's this dude doing in Ring of Honor? I just felt he looked, uh, you know, maybe not like a, stup a superstar, you know, on top of the world. But I thought he looked like a star. I thought he, I thought he looked too big for Ring of Honor. Too good for them. So uh, I really I really liked his work, and of course there was the rumblings that happens with every single free agent out of Ring of Honor or free agent period is that they're uh, going to NXT to fight over slots on a one hour show. So uh, you know apparently, and I really didn't I, I'm not gonna lie I didn't really uh, stay up on this because I didn't I didn't care at the time not about Moose but just. Uh, you know, I didn't really have my ear to the streets regarding the story, but they said, uh, you know, NXT or WWE decided not to sign him because of um, domestic violence or something like that that had happened in his past, which is kind of funny because they have a lot of people on the current roster who really were involved in that stuff. And, um, and you know, maybe they just decided they were cracking down on it as far as uh, new talent, you know, uh, talent that wasn't a stout, uh, you know, potential talent. As opposed to people who are already established within the, within the company and they can't just get rid of them. Who knows? So, the rumblings were that he was coming to TNA. My ears my ears uh, perked up a little because I said, okay, that I'd be cool with that. And back then, you know, Mike Bennett was with the company. And this is when Mike Bennett was, um, you know, he appeared very happy with the company. This is before, fast forward a year later where he's making stuff up to try to pander online. But, you know, back then he was uh, extremely happy with the company. And let's face it, Ring of Honor, they, they do a good job. They're a good promotion. They run well. But a lot of people like to say, well, no one watches GFW. Like, no one watches Ring of Honor. Um, if you look at just the uh, social media numbers, uh, the streams, you know, it's it's not, it's really not in the same ballpark. Is it a more, maybe a more passionate fan base, a louder fan base? And I don't mean screaming loud. I mean... Uh, vocally on social media or something like that yeah absolutely do they do a solid job of selling pay-per-views yeah absolutely they do you know pretty decent crowds when they travel yeah and um and, and it's funny they do a show in my local area here and you know people want to poke fun at the uh the live event gfw live event uh attendance but their attendance at that show is nothing compared to those so it's it's just funny the narrative is always hilarious but anyway pay-per-view buys are always a fraction of the people who watch the show on a weekly basis whatever wrestling company it is fraction the their weekly programming doesn't doesn't do anything so there actually is a lot less eyes on that company and their worldwide reach is almost you know, the, the thing they do, Canada, supposed to do India because everyone's trying to get on the, on the India money all of a sudden. And uh, maybe one or two other countries, but they really don't have much of a reach. So I think it uh, it, it was a cool lateral move for Moose to, to come over. But um, again, what I was saying with Mike Bennett, I think Mike Bennett was very happy at the time. And um, I'm, this is strictly speculation. I know nothing. I, I speculate that Mike Bennett kind of brought him over, uh, convinced him to come over instead of waiting it out trying to get into NXT or anything like that. And I think Moose maybe at the time probably was very set on, on NXT and it didn't work out and he could have went back to ring of honor. But again, there's, there's just, um, there's a lot more eyes on GFW, even though the, the dirt sheet narrative is that, it, that it's not, it's, um, 
m- m- much more. Okay, many more. So Moose makes his debut, and he, he's a heel, and he looks nothing like he does today. If you if you go back looking at that stuff, uh, you know, of course it has to do with facial hair and all that. Nothing, nothing like him. This is what this is what I think. I think that Moose kind of came over like, yeah, let, let me do this. Let me make my name. And I think he became very happy with the company. As soon as he signed, he started getting the trolls that we always we talk about. I said even Aaron Rex got it, and he was one of the most pop over people in wrestling. He started getting the trolls, started going at it with the trolls, and I think um, I think Moose just just really had a wherewithal to sit there and be like, "Wow, this this is what happens when you come to this company. Like people turn on you." And I think he started developing a loyalty at a very early stage with the company. He, um, he, I remember him making a tweet saying, you know, talking about these dirt sheets are trying to, I think he was talking about interviews, might've been a podcast or a, a written interview, but he said these, he actually had said that these dirt sheets are trying to get him to talk bad about a company that he enjoys working for. And, you know, as I said, I just think he, his loyalty was built at a very early time. He was, um, very supportive of everything going on. You could tell by his Twitter feed. He was always wearing the Impact shirts to the gym and, and travel. And he appeared to be, be very proud. And I think at an early stage, he told himself, I will, I, will, I will be one of the guys to carry this company on my back if I need to. And, and I think he, he, to an extent, has done that. You know, he won the Grand Championship, and I think he did a really good job with it. Now, a lot of people don't care for the rules. And, I, you know, I just finished talking about Aaron Rex and those rules weren't any good for him. But I think Moose has done a pretty good job. My only complaint about Moose in the ring is going for the finisher so much and uh, and not connecting on it. Yeah, I feel like two or three times he goes for it. That's my only thing with Moose in the ring as a, as a fan that I don't really connect with. But I think he's done a good job. And you see it on his face when he comes down, he's happy to be there. He genuinely is, and now he's signed a um, what's rumored to be a, a three-year extension. So, while a bunch of these guys are signing short-term, six-month deals, and you know, uh, paper appearance match, to, you know, month-to-month things, he has said, "Commit to me, because I'm committing to you." And we've seen what has happened with guys like Mike Bennett, who came for a pit stop, um, and in retrospect, you you question their intentions. Uh, what they were trying to accomplish, but Moose was, you know, he he's basically said, "I'm I'm here for the long haul," and when you heard my heard my interviews with Sienna and Ali, like they both said the same thing: "We're here for the long haul." And there's something to be said about the people who are who are coming forward and say, "We're gonna," and Eli Drake in the conference call, "Hey, we're here. We're here to build this company. Bet on us," because they weren't doing that. They've they've got their, um. It's bit them in the ass several times in the last couple of years, you know, putting titles on guys at the end of their contracts. I mean, uh, it's shit. It happened four times in the last two years. Eric Young, Bobby Roode, Drew Galloway. Um, there's a fourth one here. I'm just, uh, cause I'm going off the top of my head. I, I don't quite, or the Hardys. All right. So four wearing title belts. And I think, you know, some of the guys, are now coming forward and, and saying, I want to commit to the company, commit to the fan base, commit to the growth. And I think Moose has been a very good model citizen. And I think he's done a good job um, on the show. I have, the, you know, the only person he seems to struggle with is, is uh, Lashley. And those matches always seem to end the same way. You know, he kind of goes for the finisher and, uh, and then catches a spear. And he has said the move is called the game breaker, but the, Pope called it the game changer. So now we don't even know. But uh, Moose has been a good soldier for the company. He really has. I want to know what you guys uh, think of Moose and his time in the company in the last you know year plus. And uh, everything that he's um, shown as far as uh, dedication. I remember he was interviewed by Jim Ross little over little after coming over. And he's like, yeah, I, I moved to Orlando. You know, he had lived in Atlanta for quite some time. And he moved to Orlando because he, he said, well, I work here now. And Jim Ross rebutted as he typically does with, oh, well, uh, I mean, there's also the performance center here if you, you know, if that. And and Moose gave him absolute silence. Didn't appease him. 
Nothing. Absolute silence. I, you know, so I think he's one of those people who really has not appreciated um, those comments. I really do. I don't know the guy. None of us know him. I really feel that way, though. I really feel like he doesn't appreciate those comments. So I wanted to know what you guys think of Moose and um, have you enjoyed his time in the company so far? And uh, I, I don't think he's disappointed. I really think he stepped up to the plate. And I, I've been kind of joking he doesn't appear to want his grand championship back. But, it, you know, it looks like he uh, maybe has bigger plans for himself. This is BQ. Subscribe to the channel. We're talking Global Force Wrestling just about each and every day. Would love your subscription. We are working towards 2.5K by Bound for Glory. Looks like we're on path, uh, on, on course to go 3K. But we'll see what happens. Thanks for listening, guys.